Hello everyone. In this video tutorial, we will look how to use the neural network concept in designing a model predictive controller. So it will also involve two steps. First will be the system identification and the second will be designing the controller. So in the first step, you develop a neural network model of the plant you want to control. As you can see in the figure, U is our control parameter. So it is input to the plant, which will then give some output YP. We then feed this U and YP into our neural network model, which will be a time series neural network. And then the error is calculated using the usual method. And then we apply the back propagation using any of the learning algorithm that we have already discussed. This is what our neural network will look like. As you can see, this is similar to our time series neural network. So this is the complete model that we will be looking into. So in the first step, we have created the neural network model of our plant. So in the second step, we will use this neural network model to predict the future values that is YM to be fed into the optimization block. The optimization block is also fed with the YR, which is the reference signal we want from the plant. Then this optimization block using some optimization algorithm that optimizes the future plant performance. So basically, we will have our output from the plant which matches nearly with the reference signal. Here U' dash is the tentative control signal and U is the control signal that is input to the plant. So these two are basically same and one is input to the neural network model and the second is input to the plant to predict the YP. The optimization of the controller requires a significant amount of time of online computation because the optimization is performed at each single time step to compute the optimal controls input. The optimization block tries to minimize the performance which is shown in the equation on the screen. So as you can see the first term is basically the difference between the required signal and the signal predicted by the neural network model and the second term represents sum of square of the control increment values. Here n1, n2 and nu define the horizons or the time steps over which the tracking error and the control increments are evaluated. As already said, Q' dash is the tentative control signal, YR is the desired response and YM is the neural network model response. Rho is the parameter which is multiplied to determine the effect of the sum square of control increment on performance. Coming back to the MATLAB, type in red CSTR in the command window and press enter. This will open up the simulink model which makes use of the NN predictive controller. So first let's look which plant we are using. So plant is basically a set of equation that represents the dynamic model of our system. So as seen in the figure, we are using the plant that is continuous state tank reactor or CSTR. And the equation for this system are shown on the screen. The first equation represents the rate of change of the height of our model and W1T is the flow rate of the concentrated feed CB1 as in the figure and W2 is the same thing for the second fluid and for the second equation we have the rate of change of the product concentration at the output of the process. So we will build this equation in our plant model in the simulink. So the objective of our problem will be to maintain the output product concentration that is CB by adjusting the flow rate. For simplicity let's assume this CB1 and CB2 to be fixed and the values are shown in the figure and K1 and K2 are kept as 1 and W1 at any time T is kept constant as 0.1. And we are not concerned with the change of HT so HT is not controlled in this experiment. So let's double click on the plant. And this is the same equations that we have already discussed. You can confirm this by comparing this model with the equations. Then we have our NN predictive controller. So it is fed with a reference signal. We are taking any random reference signal. But in real life, we would know what our reference should be. Or we would know what our output from the plant should be. It is also fed with the plant output for the NN model. So right click on the NN predictive controller and open it in a new tab. So as you can see, there is a block named prepped op. So this is basically the optimization algorithm we are using. And it is fed with the reference signal and the two signals from the NN model and the plant output. It then uses the optimization algorithm to calculate the control input parameter, which it then gives it to the control signal for feeding into the actual plant. Right click on the NN model 
and open it in new tab so as you can see this is how our time series neural network look like there are few differences which we are using first we are using the switch block these are used when we are normalizing our inputs and outputs and then we are using the discrete state so we are converting whatever input we are getting into discrete states and other than that this is similar to our usual time series neural network note that the two output from this nn block are y hat and y hat 1 y hat is the output from the second layer or the output layer and y hat 1 is the output from the first layer or the first hidden layer so let's see how our NN predictive controller is used for controlling the input to the plant and making sure that the output from the plant is similar to that of our random reference. So double click on the NN predictive controller. It will open up a new window. So this window basically consists of the parameters for our optimization block. So let's discuss these parameters. The cost reason N2 is the number of time steps over which the prediction error are minimized. And the control horizon NU is the number of time steps over which the control increments are minimized. We are keeping the N1 as constant which is equal to 1. So we will keep these values as default. And then we have the control weighing factor which is rho and it is given a value of 0.05. And then we have the search parameter alpha and it is given a value of 0.001. If you want to know how these parameters are used in the optimization algorithm, you can search in your MATLAB directory predopt.m file. It contains all the algorithms that we can check. We can also select different minimization routines. So we will be continuing with the default routine. And the iteration per samples selects the number of iteration of the optimization algorithm to be performed at each sample time. But this is the second step. So before this we need to perform the first step also and this can be performed by clicking on plant identification. In this we will create the neural network model of our plant. So we can select the size of the hidden layer. We can change it to let's say 10. Sampling time we will keep at 0.2. So basically we will be generating the random training samples. If you have the actual data you can click on import data to import it from the workspace. But for this example, we will be generating 8000 random training samples and those training samples will be selected from the random number generation which will have a minimum value of 0 and a maximum value of 4 and the interval in which it will be selected randomly will vary from 5 to 20 seconds. You can also specify the limit for the output of the plant. So we keep it as 20 to 23. Simulink model either you can browse or can provide the name of the Simulink model as it is saved in the MATLAB directory. So we provide it with CSTR. We can specify the number of training epochs and the training function. So let's keep it as default. We can also use the normalizing training data. So this will activate the switch block that we discussed in our Simulink model. And this is the number of plant delays for input and output. Let's keep it as two for each. After all these parameters are set, click on generate training data. So as you can see a new windows comes up. So it is taking any random number from 0 to 4 in any random time step that is 5 to 20 as specified in the parameters in the previous window. And the bottom is the plant output window. So it shows the actual plant output. So basically what we are generating is the input data and the target data for the neural network training. So we will wait for this data generation to complete. After the simulation is complete, the window will look like this. So if you know how your plant output variation should look like, then you can compare it with the plant output window. If it does not match, then you can recheck your Simulink model. But for this example, we will accept the data by clicking on accept data. After the data is accepted, we have our input data set, the target data set. So we can click on train network or training using the train LM training function. So after the training is completed, you will get a window like this. This will show our input, the plant output and the neural network output. So this neural network output and the plant output should look similar for a proper training. If these two look similar, then you can accept the data by clicking on OK or Apply. 
so click on ok and as these parameters are already set so click on ok here and then click on run the model is being simulated so after the simulation is complete the graph will look like this so in this red line is our reference signal and the blue line is the output of our plant so as you can see this time the output of plant tries to copy the pattern of our random reference you can change the parameter of optimization algorithm to make this process faster or slower if you have a plant model of yourself then you can directly select the NN predictive controller from the Simulink library. So go to the neural network toolbox, the control system and here you can select the NN predictive controller. So that's it everyone. This is it for this video. Hope you like it and please like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching.